So I'm doing my senior project on national service in the United States. So the concept of national service, especially in the United States, is not a new one. When most people think of national service, they think of a draft, like in the First or Second World War. But in reality, uh, a program nowadays would look a lot more like the Great Depression programs that existed, like the CCC, for example. Now, these programs were not made for any specific goal, but rather to stimulate the economy by providing jobs for lots of young men and women. One of the results of this project was Timberline Lodge, which a lot of us know. Now, the main concept of these is that they're not made to build things just because they wanted to build things. They're made for a larger purpose, in that case was to stimulate the economy. But it takes a large government organization to be able to accomplish those things. No private company can do that to the scope that the government can, which is kind of the main focus on why a mandatory service program would be implemented. So what would it look like right now in the United States? Well, in a time of crisis, uh, which is very unique, which we are in, uh, specifically a pandemic, it would mean having a very large and able workforce uh, that could do things on a larger scale than any state or uh, corporation could do, uh, which right now we're running largely on nonprofits, which take donations, so that it's not centralized enough to solve big issues like this. However, in a non-crisis time, which is what we would normally be in, it would look more like opportunities for people right after high school, meaning you could, if you wanted to, uh, join this, this service uh, and it would have options like if you wanted to be an engineer, you could go do construction site stuff. If you wanted to join the army, you could do the draft. And you'd have options based on whatever you wanted to do with some sort of larger incentive. A lot of expert, experts recommend making uh, like we have in the Army, where it pays for part of your college education to incentivize being part of the service program if you're not going to make it mandatory. However, right now we do live in a coronavirus world, so having this large uh, force, basically, uh, where we have a lot of young people who are sitting at home not doing anything necessarily productive towards solving this issue, you would have those people be able to help in a way that was coordinated. However, we don't have one right now. We are in the midst of a pandemic. So why is this not a huge topic? Well, what I figured out through my research is that it's not necessarily a Democrat or public issue, but they tend to switch. And when one side supports it, the other side tends not to. Meaning about 20 years ago or so, it was a largely Republican push and it was more largely around the military. However, now that's kind of died down and it's become a much more Democrat associated idea as in it's become a lot more social, meaning a lot more domestic uh, opportunities rather than you just join the military right after you get out of high school. So interestingly enough, how would this be reacted to by people who would be actually affected by this, meaning young people who probably be involved in this service? Well, if you look at our history of drafts and service, it's really not consistent. Uh, the picture on the right is after Pearl Harbor, during the Second World War, where Army recruiting officers were literally flooded with people where they could not accept everyone. They were, ha they were just overwhelmed by the amount of people who wanted to serve their country. However, that's not usually the case. And even during World War II, there were draft protests. But especially more recently, there's been a lot more resistance to draft and to mandatory service. Earlier this year, uh, there was the quote-unquote threat of World War III looming. And the large response by the young population was, if this does happen, which is probably not going to happen, how do I avoid going to war? Which is the response most people have to serving in this context, which is very different, which proposes its own strategy. But we have no idea how people react to this kind of program if it wasn't military. So right now, is there any way that this thing could actually happen? Well, uh, Chris Coons of Delaware actually is proposing uh, a bill in the Senate which would allow, basically create a program for people to uh, respond to COVID-19 and be able to serve uh, in a, v not a large way, but in a kind of a prototype of a mandatory service. He's obviously not calling it mandatory service because he wants it to pass, but right now it's a very partisan thing, meaning only Democrats are really supporting it. So it doesn't look like it's gonna pass. And the main problem with this whole idea of a mandatory service is the benefit of it is it would create unity in our country. If you serve with other people, 
in a variety of different ways. The idea is that it would create an essence of common culture or at least awareness of each other's cultures and create a sense of camaraderie in the country. But the problem is it won't happen because of this lack of unity we have, meaning that it's so difficult to make something large happen in our country, especially today, that it's not, it needs that sense of unity to start. So there's a catch-22 there. And unfortunately, a lot of people theorize that it would take a crisis uh, on a large level to spark this kind of unity to happen. But we're in the midst of a crisis right now, and it really hasn't happened, unfortunately. If you're a Democrat, most people are uh, not happy with the way Trump has handled things. And if you're a Republican, you're not happy with the way that Trump is being portrayed. So it, there's no sense of unity right now, even though we're in the midst of a pandemic, which is not, uh, which is a very large crisis. And here is my works cited.